Hello and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. My name is Mark. In this episode, I'm going to build a logo that I can put on the wall behind me. I decided to use my own logo from the Electronic Engineer. That's a private channel I own. And my niche is Spectrum Analyzers. So I have to include Spectrum Analyzer in this logo. I also will include a YouTube counter. So it's kind of related to a, to a channel. So if you have a YouTube channel and you want to uh, add a counter with some special features like Spectrum Analyzer, this is for you. First, I will assemble the PCB, then I will start assembling the logo, put everything together, and of course, I will walk you through the firmware that is done in uh, Arduino EDA. Well, let's get started. As always, let me walk you through the schematics. We have a microphone, which is actually a microphone with an audio processor, so all it has is a digital interface, which is perfect for this project. I also added a connector in case you want to mount the microphone outside of the PCB. Of course, we have our audio board that has also a digital input, and all it does is convert our digital signal into a nice audio signal that we can play on a speaker. I have a potentiometer that we can use to set the volume. Of course, in the middle, we have our ESP32 Do It Dev Kit. That's our microprocessor board. And then on the right, we have our connector to drive the pixel LEDs because I will use an illuminated background and letters. Then we have a connector for a six digit display that I can use to display the number of subscribers of the channel. And then I have an interface connector for our dot matrix. Basically, I'm going to use four elements and each element has eight times eight LEDs. So altogether, that's a lot of LEDs that we can drive and it will show you a nice display, old fashioned dots, only one color, which is enough for this display. Then we have our power input. It has a connector for the power, a switch, a fuse and a protection diode. And then we have some capacitors to smoothen out the power and we'll convert it to five volts. That goes to the ESP32. And I added two connectors that I'm not going to soldier. They're basically reserved IO in case I want to add something later and I don't need to redesign the PCB. So it's always smart to add a few extra connectors for pins you don't use. So in this board, I added a few connectors that are there and we don't need to redesign the PCB in case I need them. So let's start assembling. So let me walk you through the components. Of course, we have our PCB. We only need one. I always have two, so in case something goes wrong, I can start all over again. But hopefully one is enough. So I designed this PCB because it's nice and compact and I don't need to worry about so much wiring. Um, of course, we have our display. This will be uh, hooked together later and it will form a nice display with uh, columns that uh, will show the, the audio. And of course, we have our uh, display to show the number of subscribers. We have a audio board, which is kind of tiny, but you know, it's perfect. It will just fit on the PCB. We have our microcontroller. Of course, we have our microphone and I will add a speaker of some sort. I have two to try and I'm going to add one of those. I will decide later. We have some connectors over here that I'm going to use for hooking up the microcontroller, the audio board and the microphone to the PCB so it's easy for me to take them out again in case I need to change something. I have a small potentiometer which is this one or a variable resistor and I can use that to set the audio to a certain volume. We have our protection diode and two resistors that we're going to add. Of course we have a fuse, a power connector, we have over here uh, a few capacitors that I need for the power supply, a switch and a regulator. And of course, there's a power adapter. So let's put all of this together on this PCB according to the PCB layout. So let's get started. So I put some of the components in place and all I need to do is uh, solder them. So the noise you hear, that's my soldering iron. Sorry about that. The fan just likes to make lots of noise. So I always do one pin of each component, then realign everything if needed, and then start soldering the other pins. That way everything goes smooth. 
because this board has a ground plane it takes quite a bit of heat for the soldering tin to flow properly but that's okay so now that I did the first part I'm going to cut the wires and then I can solder the remaining pins So with all the components in place, all I need to do is solder the remaining pins. Everything looks good, so I'll flip it over. And as you can see, there are still some pins that need soldering. So that's what we're going to do now. Some pins are harder than others because of the ground plane I used, or that absorbs the heat of the soldering iron. So that's something to consider in my next design to use more, more efficient thermal pads. Okay, so the soldering is done. I uh, clean up the PCB, which means I remove the residue with some PCB cleaner. And let's take a closer look at the result. Here we have our audio board, the microphone, which isn't plugged in yet, but it's going to be plugged in right there in that socket. Of course, we will add the microcontroller later. Uh, we see the project protection diode, the switch and the fuse. And of course, we on the other side, we have our stabilizer for a nice 5 volt voltage and some connectors. Now, let me flip it over so we can take a look at the bottom. As you can see, there's a little error in my silk screen, which means I use uh, same cell screen for top and bottom layer and it's always on although it's mounted on the top of the PCB it's still visible which is okay so with the electronics complete it's high time to start the mechanics so let's start with the actual logo for that I use a plate of acrylic and I place it under a laser cutter to get the outline of my uh, logo and with the logo of course comes the letters so that's perfect Okay, so the idea is that I will place pixel light behind the letters, so it looks like it's bright illuminated. And at the back I will place some pixelettes uh, at the edges, so it radiates when it's, hang when it's hanging on the wall, it will radiate to the room. It will, uh, you know, give light, like there's a big glow coming from the back. And the reason for that is that I'm using a logo, which basically does the same. You know, I need something to start with. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut out um, the top edges so I have some orientation point for the sticker. Harder than I figured, I guess. We have some orientation points. I'm going to remove the protection layer of the sticker, like so. And now I'm going to apply some uh, soap water. And then I'm going to place this one on top, like so. So now what I need to do is flip it over and then start um, removing the air bubbles. So now I'm going to carefully cut out the remaining. There are still some edges on the outside that need fine tuning, but that's not going to be a problem. We can do that later. Now let's do the inside. Very carefully, any mistake here will be visible. Actually, this is what it looks like. And all I have to do now is uh, put in the, the displays. And of course, um, I have to put something at the back because um, I will attach lights, pixel lights on this plate that will illuminate the letters. So in order to put some LED strips here, I need to be able to mount those LED strip on a plate, so there should be a plate about here. And to do that, I have to uh, put some plastics in between. And of course, this plate on top. I also glued a few panels to the back, as you can see, and I'm going to use that to attach the LED strips to, so it's easy mount, and uh, I just have to hook up the wires, and then and that part is also done. We have a place for our PCB that I'm gluing down right here. We got our dot matrix, we got our LCD, and of course we have the letters. And on the back of the letters I will apply some LED strips. As there is one here to make a backlight. And of course, uh, to illuminate the letters, 
I put some LED strips in here. Now make sure if you're going to connect those LED strips that you follow the arrows. Um, the output of one strip goes to the input of the next strip and so on. That makes sense. Um, take a closer look at the LED strips to find out what I mean. And of course we have a speaker that will be there and everything will be perfect. First thing I'm going to do is wire the LED strips and it's not that hard. This one is the input. We're going to the next one and we'll just follow a zigzag pattern. So if you're connecting LED strips together, make sure that uh, the output of the first LED is connected to the input of the next one and so on. And of course the input of the total is connected to your microcontroller or the PCB in this case. Ground should be ground and plus 5 volt should be plus 5 volt or 3 volt if you use it. So that's uh, the first part. Since the wiring is not that spectacular and it's kind of boring, let me skip ahead a bit. Okay, so when you take a closer look at the letters, all you see is the, the dots from the LED. Uh, I don't like that, so we, I will have to put a diffuser in between. And I made a simple diffuser by laminating some paper. And I will cut that up to size and then put it in between the front display and the, the backlight. And the dots are gone and we have a nice diffused light. Are you an engineer, electronics hobbyist or maker? Join the Element 14 community, where you can learn about new products and technologies, see cool projects, and connect directly with the people that make the products and the engineers that use them. Join now! All the hardware is ready. Uh, we should start programming it. So let me walk you through the firmware and let me tell you how to program it. Okay, so the sketch is made of two files. Uh, the first one is the program itself. Let me start with that one because the other one is all about settings. I always put the version of the libraries that I use in the comments so it's easy for you to see. And if the program is not doing what you expect, you might want to check these versions. Maybe you have to downgrade or upgrade your libraries. Okay, so after including those libraries, uh, declaring some variables and functions, we do a setup in which we initialize the displays, the microphone and the Wi-Fi. And of course we have a task uh, declared for our second core because this microcontroller is dual core. Then we come to the main loop and each time this loop is passed it goes to the same function all over again. And basically what I do you can see that step by step because I name it uh, in steps so it's easy for you to follow. But in short what I do is I read my samples from my A to S buffer which is basically the ADC buffer. I process the data. First I do a little pre-processing where I compensate for a channel offset and some other things. And then I do a FFT analysis on that raw data. And that raw data is then uh, divided into frequency bins that I defined in our setup. Uh, you can change these frequencies. It's actually the center frequency of each bin. If you change that, the center frequency will also change. But it's up to you to play around with that. Uh, when that is done, I take those frequency bins and I do a little averaging uh, because I don't want it, uh, the bars to jump all over the place. I want them to go up and down smoothly. And actually you can change the way it does that by changing this parameter, the gain dampen. And then you, if you change that number, it will go, react slower or faster. And when that has been established, we still need to scale it to fit on the display according to the number of dots that are available and that's what I, I do here. So when that is done I will make it fit on the screen and then it's made up to scale according to the number of dots available. And then uh, the second core I'm using to play audio because whenever there's a new subscriber I want an audio file to play or maybe when there's 10 subscriber or 100 you can play a different sound and that's done here. Of course we also uh, have the part where I uh, actually read the number of subscribers from my channel, which is done here in the code. And of course, we have a function for our rainbow LEDs that changes color every few seconds. A bit about the settings. There are not many things to change. In the first few lines, I think the first 50 lines, you can change things around. I basically already mentioned it. You need to set up your Wi-Fi and your channel ID for your YouTube uh, channel, which is done here. Regarding the YouTube channel, there is a manual on how to do that. That's beyond the scope of this project, but I will make sure to include it. Just follow that manual if you want to use this on your own channel. 
it's very well described and it should work just fine. Okay, the first thing to do is check the board you're using. You should be programming the do it, do it ESP32 dev kit one. If it's not here, make sure the appropriate ESP32 boards are installed using your board manager. If you want to know how to do that, check out my previous videos. When that is done, you, all you need to do is press play. It will compile when it's done. Of course, by this time, your ESP32 is already connected to your serial port. Now with the hardware ready and the software program, it's time for a demo. Okay, so this is what we got. At the bottom, you see the spectrum analyzer that reacts to sounds. And of course, we have the letters that change colors, the same as the background. We have our YouTube subscriber counter. Every time a user is added, it will play a sound. When there are 10 users or more added, it will play a different sound. Possibilities are endless because it's connected to the internet. I could add a, a Telegram style a messenger or I could hook it up to my demotics. But all of that is something for another video. So this is all I got for you in this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, if you have any questions, feel free to go to the Element 14 community. There's a project page um, that you can uh, ask your questions, leave your comments, and I try to answer each and every one of you. For now, this is all I got, and I'll see you next time.